So this video is going to be about nutrient enrichment and eutrophication. So with nutrient enrichment, we're going to have nutrients in farm soil most of the time uh, that can run off into streams and lakes. And when this happens, we're going to see a reduction in nutrients in one area and an increase in nutrients in another. And because though of that change in nutrients, we're also going to see a change in chemical cycling in both of those areas. So some examples of how nutrients can be taken out of an environment or um, put into an environment would be nutrients being um, exported in crop biomass. So the crops will take up nutrients from the soil. And since we're removing them before they can decompose and return them back into the ecosystem, we're taking nutrients out of that environment. Uh, also, when we add fertilizers um, to the soil, we're going to add nitrogen. And so um, if we add a lot of fertilizer, though, we can have uh, that nitrogen then being leached from that ecosystem and running off into groundwater or um, other aquatic ecosystems and uh, causing some problems there. So what happens when we add too many nutrients? So we start to see problems when we exceed the critical load for um, a particular nutrient. And so what that critical load is, is going to be the amount of the added nutrient that can be absorbed by the plants in that environment before we start to see damage to the ecosystem. And so when we're talking about um, critical loads and damage to the ecosystem through nutrient enrichment, that is usually in reference to nitrates or phosphates, which are both really common ingredients in uh, industrial fertilizers. And so then once we actually exceed that critical load, the plants are no longer able to take up those nutrients. And so we're going to see those nutrients start to leach into the groundwater or uh, into the runoff. And so when those nutrients are then introduced into um, aquatic ecosystems, we can see something called eutrophication. And so eutrophication is going to be when we have a really large algal bloom and then the, that algae is subsequently going to die off. And so when that algae dies off, um, we're going to have a reduced oxygen concentration in the water and it can lead to uh, something called a dead zone where there's not enough oxygen in those regions in the water anymore to be able to support uh, organisms. I hope you found this video really helpful. The concepts and information presented in this video will be true no matter what biology class you are taking. However, the concepts presented in this video are referencing material currently covered in Baylor University's coursework. Remember, if you are a currently enrolled Baylor student, we offer free tutoring services in our tutoring center, which is located on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You will find all the details you need about these services on our website, which is www.baylor.edu forward slash tutoring. You can schedule a free 30-minute one-on-one tutoring session online or just drop in during any of our business hours. For more information about our current services, please visit our website. Thank you.